Hello, and welcome back to Rose Play Presents, Episode 10. As always, I'm your host, Ori Moon Rose, and on this special series, anything can happen, from interviews to E3 stuff to betas. Yeah, it's the opening. But, today, rather than play Gwent like we have been, it is Episode 10, so I think it's time to go back to Adama's Review Corner and show a bit more of my past. Now, first and foremost, if you're confused or want to know more tidbits about how the Adama thing started and whatnot, the first three minutes of my previous video of Adama's Review Corner will explain this. But, this was about eight years ago. Once again. Uh, no time had passed. I think it was like a week or a month. I don't quite remember when I was doing the reviews on a, you know, trial basis. But, the webcam that is used, I did state this last time, was crummy and very, very poor quality. This is used throughout the entire first season of the show. So do expect crumb graphics in that retrospect. And the white wall is also used the whole episode, even though as I looked at it, it's more of like a very dull white. So something I didn't mention in the last start of the review, is that I am sitting down during this whole thing. I believe my legs are like in a um, form like this, if I remember correctly. I'm not 100% sure, but so that's why, you know, it kind of looks like I could be standing, but I, I'm actually not. All right, so after the somehow success of episode one, getting like a thousand views for the original Adam's Review Corner, I decided to do it again. Uh, make it a continuation, but this time I knew I didn't want to use the cape as a hood, you know, pretend to be the emperor, because I felt, even though that was at the time my avatar and persona for my pick, I wanted to do something different, especially since I couldn't, well, not couldn't, didn't want to show my face. So I decided, this is when I actually decided I'm going to do cosplay, and I did. Cosplay was one of my main goals for these reviews. Uh, so I decided I was going to cosplay. Now, the coat that you're going to see is actually a winter coat. It was similar, just a little bit, to the main protagonist of both Dante and Nero, so I figured the red, the black, it works. And the shirt that I'm wearing, at least for the last review and the next review, that black shirt is a continuation of the same thing. Alright, the hair that you'll see was a blonde, long girl hair wig that I had ended up buying. I gave it a haircut uh, to be that much closer to Dante or Nero, depending on who you thought I was trying to be. And thankfully, the bad camera makes the, the wig look white, which worked for what I was going for. The sword that I will be holding, I'm holding like this. And as it's going down, it's hitting the ground, so I'm able to keep my arm that way. But boy, did my arm start to hurt you know, holding it like this, but thankfully it did have a rest with the way down. But I did use a sword. I used that from one of my collections that I decided to pick. It, it more mimics, uh, Virgil's. <laughs> the phone auto corrected it to Virgin's sword. To Virgil's sword, but I really didn't have anything that would more mimic Dante or Nero's per se. And also... Again, I, I, you know, I decided to do the cosplay thing, but I had also decided to continue to do that grainy voice, which hurt really badly. Uh, just because, again, I didn't want anybody to know it was me back then in, you know, real life or know what my voice sounded like. But, boy, I think we're ready to move on to Adam's Review Corner. So let's go ahead and start it up and take a look at Adam's Review Corner Season 2, where he, I, review... Devil May Cry 4. Hello, and welcome back, everyone. This is episode 2 of Adama's Review Corner. This video game review is done for GameStrata.com, where gamers go when they want their questions answered, or just want to play their favorite online games with others, such as Fable 2, Call of Duty 4, or any other game you may want. There is most likely someone who will want to play it there. Where do you rank? I'm your host, Adam Darkening. Today, I will be reviewing 
Devil May Cry 4 for the Xbox 360. Now that the introductions are out of the way, let's get to what everyone came to see. The review. The story of the game takes place between the events of Devil May Cry 1 and 2. In Devil May Cry 4, the player assumes the role of a young knight named Nero, who strikes a strange resemblance to that of Dante. He's a member of the Order of the Sword. Nero has just witnessed the slaughter of their high priest and their beloved leader by Dante, the renowned Devil Hunter. Which, as fans of the series will know, Dante has been the hero of 1, 2, and 3, and does not harm humans. Has Dante turned his back on mankind? As Nero, you must uncover the truth. Fans of Dante may be disappointed to hear that the hero is not the primary character, but more of a secondary character to the newcomer, Nero. However, Nero acts almost identical in combat to Dante, but with two distinct differences in abilities. The first being the Devil Bringer, which is his right arm that is no longer his right arm, but is that of a demon's. This arm has two unique functions within the game. It can project itself forward to grab objects or hurl enemies towards him, as well as cause a combo that sometimes devastates enemies and bosses alike. It also allows him to get to new areas or span huge gaps. What is most interesting and entertaining is that the arm responds differently to every enemy in the game, including bosses by performing different types of combos on all of them, not just the same repetitive combo. The second being the Exceed system, which works with his sword, the Red Queen, a sword that revs up like a motorcycle. It has three bars to rev up, each bar increasing the amount of damage the sword can afflict to the enemy. However, the Exceed system might take a little time to get used to. It can change how the outcome of battle goes for either the better or worse, depending on its effective timing in the battle. However, with the smoothness of the Devil Bringer, the guns, and sword, the Exceed system, at least in my opinion, isn't really needed to eliminate enemies in a more quicker or efficient done way. I didn't really see myself using the Exceed system that often as I did the Devil Bringer with either the sword or the guns as a combo to it. This took care of most enemies for me. As in all Devil May Cries, when you reach the end of the episode, you will be evaluated and given a rank based on how fast you could beat the level, the acquisitions of red orbs, and how high of style points from D to Triple S that you achieved while beating on the enemies without getting hit or taking breaks in between a group of enemies. Dante does eventually become a playable ca character for just a bit. However, Nero's abilities again seem to make those of Dante less spectacular and harder to achieve the best ranking at the end of the mission. In my opinion, I believe this is because you get so used to playing as Nero that it takes a bit to get used to Dante. Well, Nero, Devil Bringer, just works so well in the game because of the way it was made for him. However, some people will find it easier to play with its great mechanic addition and gameplay. Dante does return with his four styles from Devil May Cry 3. In my opinion, it feels like you play as Dante for 40% of the game, while Nero is like 60%. The game did, however, feel like the level designers got lazy and just decided when the player does take on the role of Dante just to go through the same levels with just a few differences in that level. Don't get me wrong, though. This is strangely still enjoyable. But the player may start to question, with as short of time they give as Dante, why couldn't they give new areas to him? 
Devil May Cry has six different modes in all. It gives both hardcore and casual gamers a way to play the game. How they want to without getting too far over their heads. At least with the casual gamer. The hardcore gamer, who likes to beat everything in the game, will be entertained for a while. The visuals are beautifully done, with incredible cutscenes that, at least in my opinion, amazed me compared with the rest of the series. All in all, the worst parts I felt to the game was the sometimes iffy camera angles that seemed to get me killed every once in a while. And as much as I enjoyed the environment and bosses in the game, I felt it was repeated too often. I would have also liked the game to explore the connection between Dante and Nero just a little more. However, they may be saving this for a later installment. The last worst part in the game, I felt, was in its hack and slash, which can tend to wear over time. Thankfully, it does try to mix it up in the end. In my opinion, it isn't so bad, especially with the Devil Bringer. But some people still may not like this. However, what fixes this for me, and is in my opinion the best part of the game, is the story, which seems to be the longest, and neither too shabby nor that bad in intertwining with that of the game mechanics. Nero isn't actually that bad of a character, and brings new elements to the series. As well, I hope to see more of Nero to the series, even if only minor roles. Lastly, for those who like achievements or only just play the game for, for them, this game has some easy achievements and some difficult ones. The achievements that'll keep you working on this game for a few will be getting triple S rankings for all levels, beating every difficulty, and the battle tower, which in my opinion was one of the two of the hardest achievements to acquire in the game. Besides, of course, number one being getting triple S's in every level for every difficulty that allows a rank. There are also no online achievements, but for the most part, on a scale of how hard it is to acquire all the achievements, from 1 to 10, I give this game a 7. So, the final score for Devil May Cry 4 is a 8.5 for its story, new innovations of the Devil Bringer especially, and for fans of the series, who will not be disappointed with the fourth entry. At least in my opinion. For everyone else, this game might keep you entertained by the Devil Bringer and action cinematics alone. Thanks for joining me for episode 2, and I will be back for yet another show with a review of Mass Effect. Till next time, good gaming, and see you for the next Adama's Review Corner. Hmm. So, I noticed that I was sniffling a lot during that episode. So, I either had a cold, which is very possible, because I, I record for you guys no matter what. Like, if I'm sick, I, I still do my Let's Plays, even to this day. I don't like not doing an episode. So it was either that or the voice was killing me so much having to talk like this for so long that I was getting gasps of air that sounded like snorts like that. That ended up causing, yeah. So it really looks like I'm getting more into the mood and more confident uh, with the second episode. I mean, the first episode I was really, really scared and really, uh, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's like when you first start something, you don't know it very well, whatnot. I felt more comfortable, comfortable, I mean, the thousand views helped, a ton of comments helped with it, so I honestly think as the series progresses, it shows how far I have come, which, to be fair, same thing with Rose Play. When I first started, I was a little quiet and timid, especially, like I said, I didn't like showing my face, 
And, and now look where we're at. I'm like spewing off like a crazy person. Woo! All right. And lastly, I really also don't miss the voice. It killed my throat. I don't know how many times I'll say that, but it does. It, it kills it. Like, if I were to end up bringing Adama back, I would have to do the voice again or some variation, if I could even get it down perfectly again. But that was episode two of Adam's Review Corner. Uh, I hope you guys are getting a feel of how I started, how it started, and, and whatnot. Again, I know the series isn't the best, at least personally in my opinion. But season one, once it ends, gets very interesting for season two and even more interesting for season three, the final season. But again, we'll get into that when we get there. So, come back next time on Rose Play Presents, where we'll continue the Gwent, the Witcher card game beta. As long as it's still closed. If not, I'll still do one last episode and leave it there and... I have no idea what's going to happen to Rose Play Presents. Besides, every five episodes, Adam will come back. So, remember, keep gaming, never give up. And if you have to hold your hand like this for so long, be glad there's something to help keep it in place so it doesn't get tired.